Hello and welcome to Spot This Morning. I'm Cecilia Mogbe. Happy New Year to you. And I am Tai Salam. Thank you for joining us again. On the program this morning. Yes, match day four of Nigeria Professional Football League would get us talking. But the biggest winner on the day was Rangers International scoring all four goals in the second half to beat Niger Tenders and they moved to third on the low. And what are the biggest losers? <laughs> Aim, of course, uh -huh. losing again. <laughs> They've lost back-to-back -back games wow. after winning their first two games. Not looking good for Finidi George. No, not at all. We have a comprehensive review of all the games that went down over the weekend in the Nigerian Professional Football League. We also have a preview of the games that will go down today. That's the remaining round of matches of March Day 4. Also in the Premier League, or still talking football, but this time around in the Premier League, it's advantage Manchester City uh, in the title race. That's after mm -hmm. Chelsea, their main rivals, and Liverpool battle to a 2 or thriller at Stamford Bridge. The citizens are 10 points clear, Cecilia. Who's going <laughs> literally, to okay, literally Chelsea and Liverpool handling the title to Manchester City. Yeah. It's January and yeah. City at 10 points clear. Wow. Looking good. Yeah. So the title is for them to lose They've got the advantage, right now. Definitely. They've got the advantage. Yeah. All right, also on the program, someone is joining the seventh club this morning. I'm talking about Jalen Brown. He joins the seventh club in Boston Celtics history with... 50 points against the Orlando Magic. So he's the seventh player for the club yeah. to drop 50. And for Jalen Brown, he's his first 50 points in his career. Of his career. That's a career <laughs> best for Jalen uh, Brown. was simply sensational against the Orlando Magic. And it's good to know that uh, his efforts uh, didn't go to waste uh, because the Boston <laughs> Celtics uh, managed uh, to win that game in overtime. We're talking about this uh, in the course of the program as well. All right, on the show this morning, Oyemuchi is joining us from the very beginning of the show because you're starting with the Africa Cup of Nations. Is six days mm -hmm. to the commencement of the Nations Cup. Oyemuchi Wanchuko is the deputy sports editor of the Sports and Life. Good morning. How good you morning, doing? Cecilia. Good morning, Tayo. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you yeah. too. Yeah, I wish you a great year. Yeah, I wish you the same. Wishing the Super Eagles um, also a wonderful outing at the African Cup of Nations. Indeed. And for all our athletes too, yeah. all over the world, going from continental and international championship, mm -hmm. we hope that they prepare well and they make this country proud. Indeed, indeed. And what a, what a way to ring in the year. Yes. Uh, with the biggest uh, football competition on the continent, it's just six days away. Cecilia, can you the believe Nations that? Cup. All right, six days to the Nations Cup. And of course, we'll be taking a look at the Super Eagles of Nigeria. We've done with the preview of all the teams that will be taking part. And of course, we read out the statistics of those teams. What Super Eagles will take, get our attention today? Simply because right now, we've got 13 players in camp. Remember those coming from England will start arriving today. Today's third, and that's the day that the clubs will be releasing them, the ones in the UK and the ones in the, ones in the UK, Scotland and, of course, England. Mm -hmm. So right now, let's take a look at the teams that are currently in camp of the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Maduka Okoye is the latest arrival for the Eagles. Mm -hmm. Zaidu Sanusi is, is there. Moses Simon, Francis Uzoho, Henry Oyekuru. These are the late call-up. Peter Lainka, they call them, and the next day they were already in camp. I love those guys. Chidezi Awazim is also in camp. Chidera Ejuke also there. Uh, Daniel Akme, Sadiq Umar, Olisa Nda, John Nobu, Tawa Wuni, they were the first three players to arrive camp before the others started joining them. So right now we have 13 players oh. in camp. So we're expecting by tomorrow they yeah. should have, they should have a full house, yeah. in which I mean six days to go and, you know... 13 still, players. 13 players in Not camp. ideal at all. Not ideal for Austin Eguavoin. Yeah, not ideal. No, really, not ideal, you know. And not, not the fault of uh, the coach yeah, or yeah. the federation. Yeah. You know, there have been this um, issue of club versus country um, <coughs> problems all over the place. Yesterday, Watford tried to say they are trying to hold on to Ismail Asa. Yeah, and yeah. the Senegalese are fuming that you can't do that. We've already done that to Den um, Emmanuel Dennis of Nigeria. So yeah. we, we hope that the players, what, what we need now for the coaches is for the players to come in very healthy mm -hmm. with the right mentality. And you mentioned Peter Olayinka and Henry Oyekuro. You know, I'm, I'm so impressed with the attitude. Mm -hmm. Yes, Aguavan yes, said they called them and they said they will come to camp immediately. Mm -hmm. On Saturday, both of them were there. Yeah. So these are the kind of... Impressive. Yes, the kind of uh, attitude, mindset that we need mm -hmm. for players coming into the national team. Yes, we, we, we experienced a setback when Victor Osime, the top stri striker for the team, pulled out. Mm -hmm. Emmanuel Dennis also had oh, issues yeah. with uh, his club releasing yeah. him. 
uh, Leon Balogo. But the players that have been called up have shown a lot of enthusiasm. Yeah. And I think this could be the spirit that this team may need to go far in the tournament. Mm -hmm. Because we really don't have enough time. Yes, yeah, really not enough, enough time. The for... first game is against um, the Ferris of Egypt yeah, on January 11th. 11th. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's about... Um, uh, eight days from eight now. Days from yeah. now. So, just, just two days after the Yeah, so, so it's, it's ah. really dicey. Ah, so it's, it's not, not going to have... It's not a good one at all. Uh, since you mentioned um, those, uh, you know, late uh, withdrawals, uh, four players in total, Mano, Dennis, uh, Victor Simen, not Victor surprising. Mm -hmm. when, I mean, to me, I've been saying that for a while now. Leon Balogun as well as Abdullahi Shewu. And um, a lot of uh, Nigerians are uh, obviously <laughs> not very happy uh, with that situation. But... Uh, it's a situation that no one can really help, you know, these things happen. And, uh, and uh, Egwavoin, Austin Egwavoin, has been uh, talking about, um, you know, the, that particular situation, uh, starting uh, with uh, Emmanuel Dennis. A lot of Nigerians really wanted to know uh, why, uh, you know, arguably one of the best players in the Premier League will not be suiting up for Nigeria at the AFCON in Cameroon. Dennis. He's, he said he tried his best. I know he really tried his best, according to him. We exchanged some text messages. We tried to reach out to the club. But the club was like, no, we will not allow Dennis to go. And Dennis also told me that his club had done everything humanly possible for him not to be at the AFCON. I can't force it. I reported the matter to authority. They also tried. That was why we had to wait until about the last second before we just push the button. You know, Dennis said he wants to come, but his club is saying is yeah, threatening him. Let me use the word threatening him. You know, but so what do we do if a player doesn't want to come? What are you gonna do? We have to play with what we have. Got to play with what we have, and that's why the likes of uh, Peter Olainka and Henry Oyekuru are now a part of the Eagles squad. So Cameroon, Oye how have we gotten to a situation where we're missing out on the services of a, of a very good player like Dennis because of late call-up in quote administrative uh, issues? It's shocking. I Me, mean, come yeah, on. Yeah, after the withdrawal of um, Victor Simer, mm -hmm. we thought that the next striker. It's you dense. know, almost at the same level, even playing in a, in a, in a more competitive, yeah, more competitive league than the Italian Serie A was Emmanuel Dennis. And all of us were saying, this guy should, you know, literally fill the gap that um, Osima will leave. But what, what we are hearing was um, incredible. incredible. You know, because, you know, these, these, these uh, EPL clubs, they are very smart. Yeah. And Ranieri is coaching a club that is gasping for breath. Mm. When you look at it... <laughs> They are, they are not comfortable. They're in a relegation and fight. They are, yeah, they are in a relegation fight, and yeah. the, the coach will need all his best players. The man, Dennis, for goodness sake, is their best striker yeah. at the moment. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we just gave them an opportunity <laughs> to hold on do? to the player. You know, it's shocking. It's unbelievable that uh, we sent... Like, was, it, was it that um, Dennis was never a plan of the Eagles squad? Because this late uh, pre-call-up situation I, I, it, it I, is a I, bit I really don't understand. You see, you see, when Usime started having issues... The facial injury on no, in, in November, November yeah. against Inter Milan. Mm. Right thinking administrators to begin to look at the possibility of Osime not making not it to going. the Nations Cup. Yeah. So yeah. the next thing is to look at the, 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 the most available player that yeah. could fit into that position. And that is what was the manager. So you open discussions with them. That's, that's what you do. Possible. The question you open discussion with them and you do everything in time. Because they are claiming that we didn't send yeah. the invitation in time, yeah. whatever that means. Yeah. So they look at the rules and say, OK, we, you, you can't put us in a precarious situation because yeah. you need the player. You have to tell us. So way ahead. So, way ahead. so yeah. even if they, they could get a player in the interim during the January transfer window to fill that position, but mm. they, they, they have claimed that they didn't tell them. And no. we have found ourselves in this situation. Oh, too bad. Now, the, the question I was going to ask is, was it because maybe they changed in leadership? Because I was listening to an interview uh, by Claudio Ranieri, he was asked that same question. He was talking about the change in coach and everything. You think maybe that's the reason? I'm, I'm thinking maybe the first initial list that Genentro released before he was fired, Imane Dennis was not in a plan. It could be it was when Egwavoin came in that he wanted him. 
And that's why the call up was late. Yeah, well, the, that, that has put us in a, in a terrible situation because General Troy is gone for whatever reason. I don't, I don't know why he was not inviting I'm Emmanuel just, Dennis. Yes, I, I know. He, 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 Dennis was not in his plans. And mm -hmm. that was part of um, the argument against Rome, having this fixated mindset of you know, sticking to certain players, trying to reward loyalty and all that. So if a player is doing so well in the English Premier League, for goodness sake, why wouldn't you invite him to the national team? So we, I mean, moving forward, we shouldn't, we shouldn't, be, um, we shouldn't face this kind of situation in, in, in the future. Never. You know, it's, it's unheard of it's that your best, some of your best players can't come because, because. of... <laughs> Let's call it unacceptable. Yeah, it's not acceptable. Mm. All right, another player that we know will not be playing, not for administrative issues, but yeah. because of injury, is Victor Simeon. Austin Agavoin is reacting to this. After his reaction, Austin Okonakbang will join us from London. Yes, so Sime, it's a pity that um, he's not going to be in Afghan, but he told me. He will be in half coming spirit. Practically pleaded. And I can see reasons. You know, we tried for like hours. You know, we spoke about it. He said first, that's what's, that's my concern. That's everyone's concern. But the fact that we want him to be on the pitch and scoring goals, hustling people, but you could see that he was disappointed. And he said to me, coach, I love to, but you have to understand for the fact that I'm not okay. I don't want to go to AFCOM not giving 100%, and that would not be good. You know, I said, okay, well, why not? We let it be. I gave him a few hours, called him back again, same story. You can understand. He said, even at that, if uh, he has to do some evaluation, surgery, uh, I think on the fourth or fifth, before the United won't give a final note. And with that sort of injury, you have to consider the young man's health, uh, health as well. So it was a tough one. I we spoke at three or four different occasions before finally, at midnight, I said, okay, you know what? Let it be. And there's always a tomorrow. It's health first. As a symbol of a very, very fantastic coach. Health mm. first. That's what he's putting first. So he's not really worried about that. He's not worried that Osima is not in camp. But he just wanted him to be fit and ready mm. to play for the Super Eagles. Hopefully for the World Cup qualifiers, we will have him back in the squad. Mm. Austin O'Connor is in London. Austin, Happy New Year. How are you doing? Happy New Year, Cecilia. Happy New Year, Tayo. Happy New Year, Onyuchi. It's good to be with you guys on the show this morning. Yeah, uh, we've missed you a lot, right? You. you know that. <laughs> when was the last time you were here? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Now, um, I mean, the Super Eagles squad, we've been talking about it. On Friday, the breaking news came right here on the show that Osimen, uh, Victor Sim, of course, which was always going to be a miracle anyway mm -hmm. if he plays. Um, Imanet Dennis was a shocker for everyone. We're all downcast and like, why is he not coming? And of course, a lot of issues. Oye which has reacted to it, but we just want your reaction on this. And of course, right now we have just 13 players in camp and it's six days to the Nations Cup. Well, I think um, this whole club and country row, we, we need to find a way to take care of it. And I say we, the Confederation of African Football, players themselves, clubs and everyone that understand what it means to compete for the fatherland, you know, because this is going on for just too long. Uh, with Victor Osimhen, it's just quite sad. When that injury happened, we said it on this show that um, he might just be out of the AFCON. And I said it that we should start preparing for life without Victor Osimhen at the AFCON, you know, and, and it is what it is now with us. With Emmanuel Dennis, I don't like the back and forth. There's no sincerity. We're not hearing... Uh, the truth, you know. Um, Claudio Ranieri said they spoke to the NFF and um, the, the club, and they both agreed at some point. They spoke with Emmanuel Dennis. He said he would like to play for Nigeria, but he would also like to help Watford. It's the Africa Cup of Nations. And I keep telling players, no matter what you've done at club level, if you lack national team football relevance, your respect is not complete, you know. Maybe... 
just maybe Manuel Dennis had doubts about his place at the AFCON uh, because, I mean, if you a top striker and you're doing well, you say well, there's Victor or Simen, there's Odioni, Halo, uh, then you're thinking, will the coach use me? Will the coach not, not use me? But if you really want to represent your country, you want to go and show that you love your country. I don't think any club will hold you back. Even if letters come it or not, you say, look, I'm in, a, I'm in a very fine form. My country can come for me and I want to play football for my country. Um, I was asking someone in the team, I said, what happened to those guys who are, who are quickly called up now? How many, how many months notice did they give to their clubs? They were just to stand by and they said they want to go to their country. When that invitation comes, off they go. I think that's the mentality players should have. Guys, can you remember in 2008 when Barcelona wanted to stop Lionel you Messi? Know, yeah. All right, we've lost Austin there. I was talking about when Barcelona was trying to stop Lionel Messi for, mm. for playing for Argentina. But then somehow it just didn't happen because, well, the club and country row is not as big as it is in Africa. And that's why most of the coaches are even talking about having all the international competitions at once. Claudio Ranieri made reference to that, saying that the Nations Cup can be played alongside when the European Championship is going on or Copa America is going on, so they won't have these issues. But then Africa Cup of Nations has been in January since inception because of our own weather. So I don't know if they are influenced because of the numbers of players that are playing in England and, of course, across Europe will be something that should influence the, I mean, Confederation of African Football, CAF, to really think of rescheduling the Nations Cup alongside European Championship. Should we be thinking along that line? Or should we no, develop no, our league in no. a way that we can have our first team, even from our own leagues, and then maybe the World Cup, that's yeah. when you now need these players playing in, in Europe. Cecilia, I think it's just total disrespect, you know, and I don't know how the Confederation of African Football, they've, you know, carried themselves or shown themselves to their European counterparts. You're right. From an Arsenal legend, you, you, you saw what went viral and you yes. saying that who, have, who ever talks about or consider playing for the country? Why is it that whenever the AFCON is coming, Cecilia, change this thing, put it in, in sync with European calendar, as long as there are African players who are doing so well for their clubs when the competition is approaching, coaches will have problems. And it's just total disrespect. And it has to okay. stop. That's why I said Taf must find it. This thing has been going on forever. For as long as I've been covering football, whenever there's an AFCON, there's a problem with releasing players. And it just has to stop. It has to stop, has indeed. Stop. Yeah. Um, Cecilia, let, let's uh, get, we'll come back to you now, Austin. Um, two players, uh, who a lot of Nigerians or who uh, Augustine Egwanvoy will be banking on uh, for the tournament is uh, uh, Taiwa Wuni, definitely one of them because the top two strikers are out. No Simen, no Dennis, they're not. Naturally, Taiwa Wuni has to be one of those guys uh, that the coach uh, will be looking or will be banking on to deliver the goals uh, for uh, Nigeria in Cameroon. He's been talking uh, about what the preparation uh, looks like. Uh, for the AFCON. We're going to hear as well from defender Chidoze Awazim. Well, uh, it's been a great session. Uh, two times a day since we resumed in, into the camp. Uh, uh, it's been a nice training session with different drills, getting us into the rhythm and getting prepared for the games. And hopefully when the time comes, we'll deliver for the conference. It's been a wonderful atmosphere in the camp. Everyone is uh, prepared. We're preparing uh, with a few players that are in the camp right now. And training section has been good. Everyone is giving his best. And the coach will we're doing well with the coach as well. He's doing a good job. And um, we're hoping to get more players as soon as possible so we can have a full team and prepare for, for, for the AFCON like very properly. You're welcome back to Channel Sport this morning. It's time to take a look at the games that went down over the weekend in the Nigerian Professional Football League match day four. After four games, Remo Stars, surprise, surprise, surprise package of the season. They're still unbeaten. Uh, they went all the way to the Kada and got a one all draw. What a start to the season uh, for Benga Ogumbote. 
and his team. Elsewhere, Plateau United defeated Heartland by three goals to nil. You saw highlights of that game during the break. Wicked Taurus was the same scoreline over MFM. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't, I, it's not panic stations yet, yeah. but mm -hmm. MFM have not started the season well at, at all. all. Uh, three nil against uh, Wicked Taurus. Uh, Nassau United were also winners against the oh, champions. The defending champions went down 2 0 against Nassau United. Let's move on to other matchups. The biggest winner of match day four Rangers International, the Flying Antelopes, they were in flying form against Niger Tornadoes 4 0. That's how that game ended. It was 2 0 between Canopillars and Aimba in the star mm -hmm. matchup of the weekend. Back to back losses now for Finity George in charge of the People's Elephants. And last but not the least, in a goalless between Sunshine Stars and Rivers, Rivers United. Oh, Rivers still unbeaten. Okay. Okay. Let's start with uh, the matchup between Plateau, Plateau and Heartland. Heartland. Yeah, we saw the video yeah. a couple of minutes ago. Some um, good goals. It, it, the, a lot of, yeah, very good goals. A lot of factors came into play. You know, Ile Chuku, his last club was Heartland <laughs> before he went to, for um, obvious reasons, yes. money mm -hmm. issues. He's still be old up till now. Yeah. He went to play to United, and that game was like um, a litmus test for him. Yes. So he hammered his, his, uh, his former club 3 0. For Heartland, not looking really, really good for mm -hmm. them. Um, the first game, they, they drew at home against Nasarawa 3 3. They went away, got battered by Remo Stars 3 0, mm. uh, managed to um, win against Dakada in their third game 1 0. And, um, so, no. if, so in four games, they have just one victory. Um, they, 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 they have lost two and drew one. So mm. not really looking good for them. I hope they can turn it around very soon. You were talking about Dakada and Remo, and Cecilia, you were quite impressed with um, what Remo Stars are doing in the league. After four matches, um, this is the first goal they will concede. Mm -hmm. That's for the season. They, 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 that's, yeah. the, that's the first time they are conceding. It's called they six, beat six, yes. They beat um, MFM here in Lagos two 0 Beat uh, Heartland three zero. Drew surprisingly against Nasra. I watched yeah. that game in the Kenya. It was a very difficult game, and everybody was saying that um, I think this is the biggest test for Remo yeah. Stars. Uh, so, so that was that, that was it. And now they have gone away and recouped at least recouped some points. Um, in a way, so it's looking very good for them. And like we were saying here, if a cl club is well run, if you're able to sustain, mm. then this could be a model. I, I was telling um, the, the two of you that you what being, I saw yeah. in, 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 at, in, the, in their stadium, yeah. they, ha they, they have everything going on for them. Beautiful stadium, large green pitch, mm. and uh, the players all house in comfortable um, accommodation inside that place. So everything is looking good for them. It's looking good. Yeah. I, I mean, it's not a surprise that they, they play, they started the season so well when uh, players have all of the basics. Yeah. Uh, you know, they just focus on playing their game. Uh, yeah. So uh, even though they're yeah, newly promoted, they, as long as they're quality players, yeah. uh, they have the basics, they have the right motivation, they're going and doing and they, great they have things. And they're having an experienced coach too. Exactly. Yeah, they're they're that's they're they're doing well. Yeah, they're for Nasarawa, Aqua United, this is the first victory for Nasarawa United, and this is the first time Aqua will be losing. Yeah. So it's a, a game of contra contrasting <laughs> fortunes. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so um, um, two nil. Silas Mwanko, the highest goal scorer yeah. of last, last season, season, also scored the second goal. There, Michael Tochuku mm. scored the first goal for them. Rangers were the biggest winners, four nil. Mm. You know, after losing to Enyemba at home last weekend, they went away and got a draw. Uh, I think they are gradually getting into their groove. Mm. Abdul Makaba. Maybe his, his philosophies and his style of play is gradually being imbibed by, the, by his team. So, funnel against Niger Tornadoes. And we are saying, will Tornadoes be like uh, the Norwich, yeah. Norwich City of um, EPL? You know, almost uh, going and coming back uh, yeah. all the time. Then Pilas and Yimba. Yeah, we yeah. thought that Yimba would get something out of this yeah. game. I but uh, so. Pilas were desperate for their first victory yeah. exactly. of the season. Exactly. They've not been doing well. So, they got it and not too good for Yimba. Like you said, they were beaten at home by Rivers United Rivers, last weekend, yeah. and uh, now... Um, they went away, they and went they were beaten again. They beaten again. But, but to, to, to be fair to uh, Aimba, Cecilia has, uh, has made a lot about it. It's been a crazy start, a very difficult start to the season for them. Yeah. Two derbies to start against yeah. Rangers and Abia. And after that, you play Rivers. And after that, you play Cano like, Pillars. Yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, and, it's, and it's hard. They, 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 they also played midweek, and uh, yeah. these players are not machines. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you travel long distance, you take some time to recover. And, uh, you know, play more matches, mm. have 
have both effects. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, could, it could help you. It could also yeah. bring you down. Could be, yeah. So I hope they'll go back and um, mm -hmm. yeah. look at the flaws and uh, make up for the victory, I mean, for this loss. Indeed. In, Austin, in Austin is still with us. Austin, uh, Austin. Um, Aimba. Right here with you. <laughs> okay, let's let's go, let's go, man, let's go. Uh, Finity George, I was talking uh, after this game against uh, uh, Kano Pillars, pretty much just ruined uh, missed opportunities. Uh, what do you make of yeah. uh, Aimba going down uh, to nil in Kano? Yeah, as only what you said, Kano Pillars really needed to win. There's not a mm. small side in the MPFL, and to think about it, they will go beyond four games without a win was unthinkable, you know? Uh, yeah. But but let me let me let me feel for Philip George and Aimba <laughs> this morning. What a way to start the season and ask for sports tonight last week that who made these fixtures, you know? Exactly. <laughs> you start with the Abia Derby, then you go on to play the Renta Derby with Rangers, yeah. and then they play reverse United. Uh, uh. And now Kano Pillars. <laughs> What's going on, you know? Because at least the start of the season, you're playing so much difficult games. But it's aimed by, I'm sure they will learn from this. You know, it, it's a run. It's just that it's disappointing. They lost to Rivers United in Aba. And yes. then now they're losing back-to-back -back defeats. Aimed by a big team in the MPFL all day, every day. So... I understand where Finity George is coming, particularly when you get chances and you don't take them and your opponents come around and they stun you. You know, mm. that's the story of football. If you miss an opportunity, you might just pay for that, you know. So yeah. they'll pick themselves back up. It's the league and um, it's just match day four. Uh, as we used to say with our analysis, when John would not match up, we would know. <laughs> Yeah, your spot on Austin. And uh, the good thing for Aimba is that eventually they're going to have uh, in quarter an easy run of fixtures, right? So they can deal with their difficult uh, uh, set right now. M yeah. Maybe later on in the season, they'll deal with their easy uh, run of fixtures. Uh, we're still talking about the Nigerian Professional Football League. Let's take our post-match reactions that are coming from the game between Plato United and Heartland. It is our responsibilities as coaches to coach them and to teach them how to score. But it, it is not our responsibility to play for them and score goals, as you can see. But we are doing everything humanly possible to see we've gotten it right. The Plateau United, they played very well. I thought uh, we were going to dominate the midfield. But uh, it's unfortunate that uh, my midfielders, they collapsed during the second half. <laughs> The guys are laughing. <laughs> I'm trying to understand what, what exactly uh, is the reason for the laughs. They said they collapsed. <laughs> they collapsed. Uh, uh, Aris, Aris, this is the most comical uh, post-match interview I've, mm. I've seen this season. Mm. Is it I mean, mocking his team I mean, or why, 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 will you, why will you think that uh, you will dominate the midfield? The midfield? I mean, it shows that uh, you didn't scout your opponents. Mm. In the 21st century, you should know everything about your opponent. That's it. Not even when they have played three matches. Mm. So it's either the management have not um, empowered the coach, or the coach has doesn't some, understand. Yeah, doesn't understand the <laughs> dynamics of uh, modern day coaching. <laughs> they have played three matches, mm. and the, some of the clips are everywhere on YouTube. You can yeah. get and see how they play. So, so to, 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 to now come after the game and expose your inadequacy is shocking. Mm. <laughs> Okay, let's, okay. Let, let's go. Let's move on to the other yeah. one. Wiki and MFM, right? Yeah. I mean, okay, we get post match reaction from that before we get back to us, to the Wiki Tourists and MFM. Of course, MFM losing three goals to nothing. I mean, MFM, when they lost their first game at home, I said, look, this is a bit tricky. Yes, mm -hmm. it was against Remo Stars. Then we didn't know what Remo Stars were coming up with because they were just coming into the season. Mm -hmm. They came to Lagos, they lost. Like, this, I mean, this is a signal. That something is really not right with the MFM. And of course, uh, the, another loss again, 3 0 away from home, fine. But if you can't really score in some games, whether home or away, and then you're losing, then there's something really to worry about with MFM. Yeah, I, I think they'll they, they will, they will feel hard done. You know, their traditional um, soccer temple, mm -hmm. Agege Stadium, was purportedly under renovation for the Aisha. Buhari International Tournaments and mm. um, the, the stadium at length has been abandoned, the innovation work. So mm. MFM um, practically, you know, mm. not, not stable, not, not, they don't have a home base. Mm. The first game, there were issues between the Tesslin Balogu Stadium yeah. and mm -hmm. Ombulaji Johnson Arena, yeah. and eventually the game was played at the uh, Onikon. So 
So, so, so I think that affected them in that first game. But subsequently, yeah. it's really what I don't understand. I, this team play very free-flowing football. Yeah. We used to uh, enjoy watching them, but they have practically collapsed. And I think the management and the technical crew of the team should begin to see this as early don't signals. Know, don't know what's going on with that Early signals and um, soon and try to do something to remedy the situation. Yeah. Three points out of four games. Yeah. Shocking. Mm. We, we, we've seen the goals they conceded. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like, it's like that's, those are, especially the first goal, you expect the defenders to do better. Mm. Like they were just watching and then it just happened. I mean, this, these things happen and um, the, the coach will also look at it and um, feel that maybe the players have not done enough or um, he's not, um, they, they, they have not been able to assimilate some of the things He's saying, if you have played four matches, uh, you must have noticed some mistakes and lapses in the team. Mm -hmm. If you are not able to correct it, then it means that something is uh, fundamentally wrong with the team. Yeah. Let's get reactions from the game. We cannot compare our team with their own. We are playing better than them. We can mark, we can press the way we are supposed to press. So, they are not bad, bad side, but they, they, are, they, they, they still need time to come up. I, I, I take it that I lost, and then I will have to go back and then try as much as possible to get my boys there. But what I saw here now, I see some mistakes from my boys, of which, yes, I will I'll go back and then rectify it. Austin, MFM, I mean, the team, or oh, even which you mentioned that maybe their home ground, I'm like, they're still playing in Lagos. Doesn't matter if it's a Nikon Stadium, Agege Stadium, or even a... Uh, uh, Oniko, it doesn't really, or Tesla Balogun State, it could be anywhere, but as long as you're home, you should be able to win your home games and get points away from home. Four games into the season, should we yeah. worry about MFM? Yeah, we should be worried about MFM, particularly because they finished strongly last season. You would expect them to get into, you know, this season renewed vigor, sustained the momentum that we saw them using uh, the way they finished. Uh, because it wasn't going so well for them at some point till Coach Olalekon Gabriel came and then brought in some stability. Now it's just three points from four matches. And if you see the way they were considering in this match, you could tell mm. that they need to do a lot of work with defense. The way they started against Remo Stars, we know it's the opening game of the season. Anything can happen. But at some point, even logistics affected the team. Is it going to be at um, Agege? Is it going to be at Teslim? Will it be played at the Mobola G Johnson <laughs> Arena? All of those things, I keep saying it affects the psychology of players. They need to be focused. They need to know where they're going to execute a match. But um, coaches will tell you these are not excuses, particularly the fans. When you need to win, you need to win. But we know going to Bauchi is difficult in the league. And so there was no chance for, uh, for MFM. We keep doing so well now. Three matches, six points. Remember the midst of match, they won action with um, Sunshine Stars. So this is a good one for them. This is a team that struggled last season. And as I said, now that the season is just starting, you need to find a way to get into it early. That's what Wiki is doing. That's what MFM must do. Because by the time you get to match the 10 and you're still struggling, then the danger signs will start showing. Hmm. Interesting. All right, let's quickly move to the fixtures, the games of four today. We just have three games to complete match day four. Abia Warriors and Quara United will be in action. You also have Gumbi United and Lobby Stars. And the last game for the day will be Shooting Stars and Katsina. Oh, even with you, these games, which one is going to get you to get your attention? Maybe Shooting Stars. I mean, that's another team that is kind of wobbly. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, the... They hosted Aqua United yes. last weekend and um, they had to rally around to equalize to save the blushes of the team. Mm. Then they traveled to Makrodi, very difficult place. Mm -hmm. They were leading in the first half, but um, allowed Lobi to also Easy. equalize and win the game. So they will look at the Katsuna United and um, they will want to recoup some of the points they have lost at home mm -hmm. and um, the ones they have also considered a way. So it's going to be difficult uh, team, but a um, difficult game. So shooting stars should get something out of it. Because Casino United are, are not really doing well at the moment. They've, mm -hmm. they've got to, they're condemned to winning this game even though because. it's still very early because yeah. right two now they've points. got just two points. <laughs> from uh, three games. You don't have two points from four games. Yeah. Uh, that, that's a relegation from right there at the yeah. start of the yeah. season. Yeah, and mm -hmm. um, for shooting stars, I think um, a lot of expectations from the fans. It's yeah. a traditional team. Yeah. A lot of pressure. So mm -hmm. the players, should realize that uh, they have a lot of uh, this thing on their, on their shoulder, a lot of burden, mm -hmm. carrying the expectations of millions of fans of um, 
a club like Shooting Stars. Mm -hmm. The Alabia Warriors and Quara United is yeah. going to be a difficult, a difficult one too. Um, Abia Warriors um, not doing so badly mm -hmm. at the moment. Quara United also won their last game at home, mm -hmm. and um, you also you want to fancy look at this game to be very difficult at the Okigwe Township Stadium for Abia Warriors. And um, we are also wishing that uh, Imama, the coach who was hospitalized after yeah. an accident mm -hmm. and had to go attend their game at Okigwe, you know, not mm -hmm. feeling very fine. We, we wish him um, recovery. Sp speedy recovery and uh, hope he bounces back very soon. Gwombe United, Lobby Stars, another difficult game yeah. in, um, for Gwombe. Lobby Stars won their last game against Shooting Stars in Makodi, so mm -hmm. they want to sustain the momentum. I think we should begin to look at um, these ex-internationals that are coming back like Eddie Dombraye, mm -hmm. like Finidi George, maybe this should signal a kind of revolution. Maybe a Renaissance taking over of Premier League uh, um, by coaches that have, I mean, young uh, coaches, coaches who have done coaches. well for the national team yeah. coming from abroad and trying to look at uh, ways of adding value to the coaching um, um, uh, job in the local in the league. Country. The organizer will have to help them by ensuring that the league is well structured. You know where you're starting and you know where you're ending. That's number one. Yeah. Indeed. That's true. All right. Let's All right. go to uh, league, England. which is obviously very well structured. <laughs> you know structured. the start and the end. Yeah, we, <laughs> we actually know. Uh, <laughs> we know when the start to next. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible game okay. of football played yesterday between yeah. Chelsea and Liverpool, Cecilia Oye, Austin. Austin, uh, <laughs> incredible matchup. Liverpool 2 0 up, and you look like, oh, they're looking very good. And <laughs> boom, Chelsea out of the blue, uh, literally. Uh, Kovacic, what a strike! What a strike! Uh, a, a striker that could win you any game, any day. And of course, Christian Pulisic as well, too, uh, getting that equalizer. And uh, a lot of people were expecting more of the same in the second half, but I thought to myself, it might just end up being an anti climax. And that's exactly how it panned out in the second half. No goals in the second half. Spoils shared, and that means City have got the advantage um, about winning the Premier League. And uh, Austin, do you see, based on this result, do you see how uh, any of these teams can still catch uh, Man City? Yeah, but it's, it's football, uh, but it's advantage City now, so that one we won't debate it. But it's mm -hmm. football where anything can happen. Uh, Liverpool fans would have said they were going to go on to win that one when it was 2 0, and then football happened. What a strike by. Coverage. I don't got a screaming right there, you know, mm. and then police um, coming on to, you know, uh, make sure that the points are shared. It's, it was Super Sunday. It's a big matchup. When Chelsea Liverpool, you know, square red versus blue, it always gets us talking. And then for some uh, reason, this man also got us talking to Mohamed Salah. I thought that was a very fine finish by, by him also, you know. Yeah. So um, with this draw, yes, City fans can, you know, start jumping. They were already jumping right after that win at the Emirates yeah, against Arsenal. Arsenal. But yeah. as I said, Tayo, Cecilia, and Uchi, we know these things. Whenever we start acting like we know football, we get stunned, you know? Uh, Manchester City, they've been complacent to some level this season. Remember how they slipped against Crystal Palace at, at the Etihad? By two goals to nothing. So, um, and with what we are seeing with COVID, there's so much mental play going on. Yeah, anything yeah. can happen. It just it takes one disaster, like in Formula One, just one crash, <laughs> and then everything will scatter. You know, so I don't wish them bad. You know, if all City fans come for me now, I'm just mm. saying with football, anything can happen. But with that draw um, from Liverpool and Chelsea, it puts Manchester City in a very good position now. They're in the driver's seat. Obviously, Definitely. that's what it's looking like. Austin Wong, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We'll go on a short break. When we'll come back, we'll be listening to Thomas Tuchel talking about the game. Well, not a happy man. He wanted a win, but he couldn't get it. So City have all the advantage. So the title is for City to lose right now. But mm -hmm. Arsenal fans happen to be all the fans that are really not happy, especially what happened against City on Saturday. They could have won that game the very first day of the year. And of course, their, their greatest undoing was actually the referee and the fans are reacting to that loss to City on New Year Day. Good. Good performance. First half was good performance. Um, I suppose it overshadows a little bit. It's, you know, maybe the referee decisions. I suppose, look, they're being out of the bias. You know, I'll say Odegaard was a penalty. You know, maybe City fans won't, but 
good performance. I suppose that we are improving. Um, today was always going to be the test. We've had good results recently, but City was always going to be the test. And it's disappointing. Uh, I think it was pretty good. Yeah, Arsenal played very well. But I uh, don't want to give any excuses or anything, but I think uh, the rep day wasn't so much on our side. But overall, I think it was a good game. And uh, I think uh, Arsenal have gotten better from last year. So uh, we'll see how the next few games go. Good game. I mean, we dominated them. But I mean, when you're playing 10 players against 12, I mean, you have to, you have to ask what's the ref doing, really. But I mean, we, we dominated them. Then midfield was absolutely silent. I mean, majority of the game, Sack was running rings around uh, De Bruyne, De Silva, and uh, Rodri. It's just, yeah, it's upsetting. But you know, football's football. We move on. Clearly, 12 against 11. Hey, wow. Uchi, I mean, I watched that game. My heart actually broke for Arsenal fans. The referee was. It, 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 it wasn't a. Uh, he it just wasn't just all the, the referee. Come on. Yeah. He, he on, just wanted guys. to make a headline. I mean, he just wanted nah, to be the man. No, nah, I think he wanted to be the man harsh. of the match. No, but, but I, I think Arsenal fans. <laughs> they have every right to be. To yeah, feel agreed. Agree. Yeah, to feel agreed. Yes. <laughs> I but, agree. I, but again, they should, you know, hold their heads high because. Mm -hmm. Gunners gave a good account of themselves Aus against Man Aus City. Yeah. I mean, the first, the first half, Man City did not make any shot at goal. Mm. Uh, it was Arsenal, uh, players all over the place, playing so well. But, you know, sometimes that, um, will I say, naivety or lack of experience, just those moments, those, those critical moments mm. that you need to keep your cool, you need to show maturity yeah. was their greatest undoing. undoing. Apart from the referees, um, whatever, yeah, whatever he did. But yeah. uh, Xhaka mm -hmm. and Gabriel, at, at those moments, you know... They it, lost it. They, they lost it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ironically, you've just talked about naivety and... And experience. We're talking of Chaka is no, it's not, it's not, it's not <laughs> it's a kick. Yeah. And Chaka is one of the Zaka. most experienced no, no, players. Well, I'm, 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 really talking, I'm not really talking about Chaka because Chaka. He cost Chaka. Yeah, Chaka is like um, with a Zaha. <laughs> almost the same temperament. At, at any moment, they can make you lose the game, get a red card, and so you know, become a, a problem to the team. But, should never but for, find himself for in a situation. player like Gabriel and like the rest Gabriel, of them. Yeah. You know, you don't need to make such a... The second, the second offence was at the centre circle. Mm -hmm. you, you can allow the player. It's, it's there not, was no it's need threat. for that foul. In, in a few minutes. Yeah, it's just a few minutes. So yeah. it, it, the decision is still... Um, they, they, they can still salvage something mm -hmm. out of it. But that was a great game from... Yeah, it Jonas. was. I mean, they could have made City to yeah. lose points, but yeah. somehow, Xhaka, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, Martinelli, those guys, they are well, You know the qualities of open. champions, even when they are not playing well. They're grinding out. They get, yeah, that's yeah. how you know champions, yeah. right? Anyways, guys, uh, that's it for football, NBA, mm -hmm. before we right. look at the show. Uh, results are for you from seven uh, games. Uh, victories are for the Toronto Raptors, the Boston Celtics. Uh, the Cavs were also victorious on the night. Uh, they defeated the Indiana Pacers, the Kings, the Suns as Phoenix. Mm -hmm. um, OK, the Lakers so, also. The Mavericks and the Lakers uh, were also our winners on the day. Our star matchup is between the Orlando Magic and the Boston Celtics. It was all about the Jelaine Brown show. 50 points on the night uh, to rally Boston to that 116 to 111 victory over the Orlando Magic. Of course, uh, the coach, delighted afterwards. That's uh, former D Tigers forward, Emil Doka. We're going to get to listen to him, as well as the star of the show. Jalen Brown was scored 21 points in the fourth quarter mm -hmm. to help Boston get that very important victory over the Orlando Magic. All right, All right. Cecilia, let's go straight to the papers. All right, I'll start with the complete sports right here. Complete sports. Manuka Okoye, 13th ego in Abuja camp. Okay, as 12 players train in Abuja. Ranieri, Watford happy to keep Dennis. Of Italian course. says dispute with Nigeria over player is over. All right, well, what you got Watford. Man. Did they win this weekend? They did not win. And yeah. what for? Well, and, uh, and Victor, oh, I said Victor Sime, the man and Dennis did not come in the second half. He didn't play, he played only first half, mm. and he was substituted. Let's see if they can win uh, with him while AFCON is going on. All right, okay. Um, Olaika came to shine for Nigeria at AFCON 2022. Omero missing Iwobi Ajayi bench for 90 minutes. That's the Euro roundup of Nigerian players. Mm. So Iwobi should have started coming. Lukaku to hold talks over Chelsea future today. Ian Acho targeting more wins and more goals in 2022. And Vadaik tells Man City they've got title to lose. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to quickly ask you on this one. 
uh, concerning Lukaku telling uh, Chelsea uh, talking to Chelsea today because according to so many stories out there, he was he wasn't on the bench in the game against it was Liverpool. Dropped. It was dropped. It was dropped. It was dropped. So, and of course, um, Tuchel didn't want to talk about him after that because he said he need to meet with the club and also with him. Yeah, he, 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 he got an interview uh, to Sports Italia where he said he was not happy and yeah. made a lot of allegations. But Tuchel said as a big player, as a senior player, uh, there are certain things that um, you shouldn't see outside the club. And yeah. I agree totally. I agree. Um, Lukaku is behaving like a kid that was denied ice cream. <laughs> but if, 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 you are not, if you are not playing, then you go and meet the coach. Yeah, you go to the you office. You go to the coach. Yeah. You go to the coach. You're a big player. You're, yeah. not, um, you're not a baby. Big money mm. move. It's a big money move. So um, let, 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 it could be resolved. I know too cool has the experience to handle such matters and okay. they, they, should, they can resolve it. Very, very interesting on. to see how this uh, pans out uh, mm -hmm. between Chelsea and Romelu Lukaku, their record signing. Let's go to Sporting Life now, Only which is a uh, paper, uh, where is the deputy sports editor, Advantage Man. So six days to go to AFCON, only 13 players. That just uh, yeah. goes on to underscore uh, how it's not ideal it's not at really. all. Preparations are for Nigeria. Ahmed Musa splashes, okay, good for him. Uh, and good for the Canopy Less players as well. So, Wolves ready to sell Traore. But he should um, be in camp. Right. He should be in camp. <laughs> he should be in camp. Yeah, so yeah. he's in Nigeria, right? He's in Nigeria. That, that's the picture. I saw the picture. Yeah. yeah. He should mm. be in camp. Mm -hmm. And he's the captain of the team. He's the captain of the yes, team. Yes, uh, also, uh, is, is, yeah. He's wow. the captain of the yeah. team. That's, that's, mm -hmm. that's shocking yeah. and not, yeah. not acceptable. I think this is not the paper we're reviewing. Yeah, I think well, it's the one for two. This was for Friday or something like that. The one we're reviewing uh, where you have uh, only th 13, 13 players, players in exactly. camp. That's the bold headline there mm -hmm. from uh, Sporting Life. Exactly. And um, yeah, all right. So that's it uh, for. Uh, for Sporting uh, Life, uh, only 13 players in Caraguabo, explaining also why he decided against uh, inviting seven NPFL players uh, to the yeah, East Coast. Yeah, he said, <laughs> so they, they actually shortlisted Winter seven time. players, mm. uh, Lucy C and the uh, Rangers yes, captain, what it is, yeah. but because the league did not start in time, of course. and these players would be lacking in uh, fitness. So he, he, he yeah. So he declined uh, inviting yeah. them. So maybe maybe it's next time there will still be mm -hmm. more matches. It shows that he has, he has the, the plan, plan to invite um, MPFL players, which, which, is, which really is really good. Great. Yeah. So that's what we we're telling the organizers, LMC, you can do better, right? Mm. Yeah, they can. They can do better, and they also can. the clubs themselves too can do better. Yeah, they can. So we can have Leicester League start in August, finish in May. We'll know when it's starting, and players get to play for the national team. That's true. In which we want thank you so much for coming on the program. Happy My, New Year. Again. Happy New Year. My pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you all for watching as well. Happy New Year. I am Taya Salam. I'm Cecilia Mogbe. See you tomorrow.